October 2000, Chad and Cameroon jubilated when the oil pipeline project between the two countries was launched. This project was to develop the production capacity of oil fields near Doba in southern Chad and to create a 1,070-kilometer pipeline to transport the oil to a floating storage and offloading vessel anchored off the coast of Cameroon near the city of Kribi. Unfortunately, this project never lasted. This is probably one of the most controversial and complicated projects ever carried out in Africa. And in this video, we will be trying our best to explain to you why the project was a failure. Now, the African continent is home to five of the top 30 oil production countries in the world. It accounted for more than 7.9 million barrels per day in 2019, which is about 9.6% of the world output. This level of production is down somewhat from the heights of 2000 to 2010, when African production was nearly 10 million barrels per day. The best lured the World Bank which attempted to engineer an accountable and transparent oil economy in one of Africa's poorest and most corrupt countries like Chad did not go well as planned. Although the World Bank had conducted the Chad Cameroon pipeline project with the belief that the resource curse can be mitigated through sound economic and fiscal policies, the results thus far show Chad's failure in handling this project. The Chad Cameroon Petroleum Development and Pipeline Project was a controversial one. The project was operated by ExxonMobil and also sponsored by partners forming the consortium Petronas and Chevron. The governments of Chad and Cameroon also have a combined 3% stake in this project. But it was rather unfortunate that the project failed just after its completion and inauguration in 2003. We will have to take an overview at the project and the reasons why the project failed. But before we do that, if you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Let's have an overview of the project. The Chad Cameroon Oil and Pipeline Project was officially inaugurated in 2003 and at an estimated cost of $4.2 billion, which represents the single largest onshore investment that would have been in Africa today. Recognizing that oil, gas, and mining projects have a legacy of impoverishment, human rights abuses, poisoned landscapes, and often violent conflict, the ExxonMobil-led consortium behind this project made the World Bank's participation a precondition for the project. It all started so well in 2000, when the Chadian government representatives met with World Bank officials and came up with a groundbreaking concept. The bank would finance the development of the oil sector in Chad, specifically the building of the 1,600-kilometer pipeline from Chad through Cameroon to the sea, while the Chadians would invest the majority of the oil revenue in poverty relief projects. That was a good plan. 10% of the profits were to be stashed in a rainy day fund for future generations. A further 80% was earmarked for Chad's development. And to make sure the government kept to the agreement, oil firms had to pay royalties into an account monitored by an independent watchdog, the Committee of Control and Supervision of Oil Revenues. It didn't take long for this agreement to begin. In 2005, the president claimed that the government was broke and that he needed to double what he could use for general government spending. Yeah, right. In January 2006, he decided he needed to buy more weapons to deal with an armed rebellion supported by Sudan, and he subsequently changed the law to give him more freedom over how to use the oil revenue. This proved to be the turning point. The World Bank immediately suspended its loans to Chad for six months. This response, not surprisingly, failed to deter Debbie's regime. Instead, since then, the government repeatedly reduced the power of the committee that was set up to supervise revenue, thus greatly limiting its ability to control the use of the proceeds of oil. However, 
The project had fallen far short of the bank's original vision of creating an unprecedented framework to transform oil wealth into direct benefits of the poor. In fact, there are evidences, some reflected in World Bank statements and official reports, that the project has increased poverty and degraded the environment, and that the struggle over the control of oil revenues has aggravated security problems in the country, especially in the region bordering on Sudan's Darfur region. Well, now the big question we all ask is, why did the project fail? The first reason we'll look at is the misuse of oil revenues by the authorities. Despite several warnings from civil society groups that Debbie's regime was incapable of effectively managing a sudden inflow of funds, the World Bank agreed to part finance the construction of the 620 mile pipeline that cost $4.2 billion, linking landlocked Chad to terminals on Cameroon's Atlantic coast. Its support added crucial credibility to what was at the time the largest ever private sector investment in sub-Saharan Africa, in one of the continent's most unstable countries. In return for the World Bank's blessing, Chad's government agreed to spend 72% of oil royalties expected to reach $1.4 billion on building schools, hospitals, and roads, which never happened. A further 10% was held back for future generations. The safeguards were considered crucial, given that reserves are only expected to last 30 years. The oil bonanza was Chad's one chance at rapid development, and they screwed it up. But although an independent oversight commission was set up to monitor spending, it was prevented from properly doing its work once the oil began to flow in 2003. The anti-poverty spending targets never came close to being met. Debbie repeatedly tried to renegotiate to allow the government to spend more money as it pleased. He won some concessions from the World Bank in 2006 and then sought to deflect domestic criticism of the lack of development by arguing that outsiders had imposed injustice on us. He even described the government's share of the revenue from the 170,000 barrels a day as crumbs. He temporarily expelled U.S. company Chevron and Petronas, the Malaysian state-owned firm which, together with ExxonMobil, run most of the oil operations in Chad. Unfortunately, Debbie's own future looked increasingly insecure, with rebels attacking the capital as he had signed decrees giving him greater personal control over the country's finances. Everybody wanted their fair share. A significant chunk of oil revenue is believed to have been spent on the military. As a matter of fact, his government announced in 2005 that oil money would go toward the general budget and the purchase of weapons, or else oil companies would be expelled. The World Bank quietly cancelled the oil pipeline agreement with Chad after revenues meant to be spent on schools and hospitals were used to consolidate former President Idris Deby's grip on power. The innovative deal signed in 2000 was supposed to ensure that the oil wealth in one of the world's poorest and most corrupt countries did not go to waste. In a statement, the World Bank said that Debbie's government had failed to allocate adequate resources critical for poverty reduction, as set out in the original agreement. Regrettably, it became evident that the arrangement that had underpinned the bank's involvement in the Chad Cameroon Pipeline project were no longer working. The bank therefore concluded that it could not continue to support this project under these grievous circumstances. And consequently, like it should, the project had to fail as the oil money was spent on regime survival and rigged elections. The next reason is poor project implementation completion. Some scientists and environmentalists released a project non-completion report that highlighted substantial flaws in the World Bank's project implementation completion report for the Chad Cameroon Oil and Pipeline project. 
This report also called for the World Bank to accept responsibility for their role in the project and includes recommendations to immediately address the outstanding environmental, livelihood, and compensation problems resulting from this project. According to Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the World Bank should be held accountable and must properly address the failure to deliver poverty reduction and also the production of indigenous peoples and the environment in the Chad Cameroon project. Now, looking at these reasons, one could conclude that the field project was both the fault of the World Bank and the government of Chad. But we would like to know if you think these were the only reasons why the project failed. Let's continue that conversation in the comments as we are dying to know your thoughts. Thanks for watching this video. If you did enjoy, do give it a thumbs up, turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any of our videos, and also subscribe and share with your friends.